In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems. This is question one. The question reads, given the information below, use the simplex method to solve the linear programming problem. What we've been given is the objective function, and that's shown right here. We need to use the objective function to find the optimal solution. We've also been given these two constraints with two variables. Now, of course, I've given this question a difficulty rating of easy. The questions that are more difficult have three or more variables, and we will tackle those types of questions later on in this series. Also, we've been told that x sub 1 is greater or equal to 0, and x sub 2 is the same. Therefore, they're both positive. Now, in order to use the simplex method, it's actually an extensive method consisting of several steps. We will be going through these steps, and I have these in the description of this video for reference in case you need to follow along with me. The first thing that I wanna do is rewrite my constraints so that they include slack variables. I'll explain what a slack variable is in a moment. So we have two x sub one plus four x sub two plus one slack variable, which I'll represent as s sub one, and that is equal to 15. For this constraint, I'll write it as 3x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus another slack variable, s sub 2, is equal to 10. Now, in case you're wondering what these are, when it comes to the simplex method, slack variables are introduced to make the difference between the left and the right side of an equation. This variable converts a linear inequality into a linear equation by adding the amount needed in an expression to be equal to a specific value. The number of slack variables is the same as the number of constraints in a linear programming problem. So as you can tell, there are two constraints here, therefore two slack variables are introduced. In addition, once you've done that, you want to bring these terms in your objective function over to the other side. So we'll have negative 5x sub 1 minus 2x sub 2, notice that I'm bringing these over plus z is equal to zero. At this point, you want to convert these equations into an augmented matrix. And by that, you will rewrite this so that each variable is aligned with the one in the other equation, forming a matrix known as the initial simplex tableau. So this part right here becomes two, four, the coefficient of s sub one is one. You don't have an s sub two here, nor do you have a z. So you'll write down 0 and 0. Don't forget the 15. For this, you'll write down 3, 1, no s sub 1 here. So it's a 0, 1, 0, and 10. For this equation, negative 5, negative 2, no s1, no s2, but you do have z. It's 1, and that's equal to 0. So what you see here is your augmented matrix. And just to show that this 15 is on the other side of the equation. I'm going to separate this with lines. Also for convenience, I'll write down x sub one, x sub two, s sub one, sub two, z, and c for the constant. At this point, you want to analyze which of these numbers in this equation is the most negative. Notice that negative five is the most negative, so we'll call negative five our indicator. So let's write down negative indicator. Now that we found this number, we will take this constant and divide it by the numbers within this column. So 15 divided by 2, I'll write that down here, is equal to 7.5. And 10 divided by 3 is equal to 3 and a third, repeating. Of these two numbers, 3.3 is the smaller. And what that tells us is that this number right here will remain as 3, whereas this two and this negative five will be made into zeros via matrix row operations. The number three is set to be the pivot. So we'll use equation two to change rows one and row three. So we have to figure out a way to make this two and this negative five into zeros. Let's go ahead and do that. To make this two into a zero, I'll multiply this whole row by two and this whole row by three and subtract row one from row two. So if I multiply this by three, I end up with six that becomes a six. Six minus six is equal to zero. Let's try the next one. This times two is equal to two, and that times three is equal to 12. Two minus 12 is negative 10. 
This times 2 is 0. Minus 3 is negative 3. This becomes a 2 minus 0. That's a 2. And these remain as zeros. 10 times 2 is 20 minus 45 is equal to negative 25. And if you like, you can multiply the whole row by a negative number in case you don't want negative numbers. And these become positive 10, positive 3, negative 2, and positive 25 in case you want to work with positive numbers instead. So I'll go ahead and do that. That becomes plus 10, plus 3, negative 2, and plus 25. Notice that that has become a 0. We want to make that into a 0 as well. I'll multiply this whole row by 5 and this whole row by 3. Then I'll add row 2 and row 3 together. So this times 5 is 15. This times 3 is negative 15. Adding row 2 and row 3. And then replacing that with our answer makes this into a 0. 1 times 5 is 5. Multiplying negative 2 by 3 is negative 6. 5 plus negative 6 is negative 1. Doing the same thing for these, you should end up with 0, 5, 3, and 50. So let's recreate our matrix. We have, once again, 0, 10, 3, negative 2, 0, and 25. That's that first row. This row is 3, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 10. And that last row is 0, negative 1, 0, 5, 3, and 50. Again, we will look for the most negative indicator. And negative 1 is the most negative number out of this whole row. Also, we'll divide 25 by 10. That's equal to 2.5. And 10 divided by 1 is equal to 10. Of these two numbers, 2.5 is the smallest. So we will keep this 10 the way it is. 10 will be our pivot. And we will use this to make 1 and negative 1 into zeros. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with the second row. I'll multiply all of this row by 10, and then take row 1 minus row 2. If I multiply this by 10, I get 30. 0 minus 30 is 30. So that becomes negative 30. Multiplying this by 10, I get 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. This by 10 becomes 0. 3 minus 0 is 3. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. Minus 2, that's negative 12. Still 0. Negative 10 times 10 is negative 100. 25 plus negative 100 is negative 75. I'm going to multiply this whole row by negative 1 to make things positive. So now we have positive 30, negative 3, positive 12, and positive 75. Once again, I'm going to use 10 to make this number now into a 0. I can do that by multiplying this whole thing by 10, that whole row, and then adding row 1 and row 3. We don't have to worry about zeros, but here, negative 1 times 10 is negative 10. Adding 10 plus negative 10 is 0. Over here, multiplying that by 10 is 0. 3 plus 0 is 3. That becomes 48. Multiplying this by 10 is 30 plus 0. Multiplying that by 10 is 500, plus 25 is 525, giving us a new augmented matrix that looks like this. Take a look. Notice that this column has two zeros and a number. That's one of our variables. Over here, we can find one of our variables, and so can we over here. This column represents x sub 1, so I'll write down 30. x sub 1 is equal to 75. For this, I'll write down 10 x sub 2, it's the x sub 2 column, that's equal to 25 because it's in the same row. And over here, that's our z column, so we have 30z is equal to 525. Let's go ahead and find out what this is. 75 divided by 30 should give you 2.5, so x sub 1 is 2.5. Dividing these two, x sub 2 should give you also 2.5, and dividing these two should give you 17.5. So let's interpret what we just found. The solution x sub 1 is equal to 2.5, x sub 2 being 2.5, s1 being equal to 0, s2 being equal to 0, and z being equal to 17 and a half will give us the optimal solution. And there you have it. 
That is how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems.